at the airport. Don't know if you can hear me. Here I'm with Vince. Vince picked me up from Toronto Airport. Gonna go to his restaurant. Beers and steaks. I'm gonna get steaks as well. Oh Gra yes. Grass fed. The best. Oh, nice. I'm so excited. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Just taking the train into the centre. Welcome to Toronto. <laughs> How far away is your restaurant? Right down this way. Let's go. Ten minute walk. Cool. Here we are at Vince's place. It's really fancy, Vince. So this is a whiskey and champagne bar. Wow, it's a lot of whiskeys. How many whiskeys do you have? Here we have over 300 great spirits. 300? <laughs> this is incredible. Look at this down here. What's your actual job here, Vince? Like, what's your title? So I'm the AGM and wine director. What does AGM stand for? Assistant General Manager. Okay. Quite stressful, or...? Well, that's why I escape. <laughs> You do? It's, it's, that, it's your only escape, isn't it? It is, it is definitely It's telling me how many hours of work of, you work a week. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, you'll see your escape soon. to Vince for inviting me into his beautiful home but for hosting me for the next few days. I'm in Toronto. Today I've got a workshop at Planted Aquaria. Before I do that we've got we're going on a hike with the owner Tom, me and Vince and Tom going on a hike somewhere. This is beautiful and then we've got I can just see a bigger waterfall over there. Check it out. And before we do that I want to give you a home state tour of Vince's beautiful creations. So we'll have a walk around, have a chat with Vince and yeah it's going to be a really good one. Hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it hit the thumbs up subscribe if you haven't done so yet here he is and drop us a comment which is your favorite little scape here in vince's place so let us know your favorites is it the outdoor pond the carnivorous bowl that would be the pond aquarium the pond aquarium terra base little collection of terrariums irigumi bookshelf tank flashing x-wing fighter tank <laughs> we didn't look at this one. Oh, that's just a holding tank. So I've had a lot of random moss balls and such, and I decided instead of just letting them die, let me see if what I just put them in there. I see what I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Vince. Hi. Thanks for inviting me into your home. But not only that, you're hosting me for the next few days. My pleasure. And uh, I just told everyone you know, when you're in the shower how great the steak I had was yesterday. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed. I'm so. Glad you enjoyed. Just briefly tell everyone what you do in that restaurant. I'm, I'm the assistant general manager there, uh, which means I'm in taking care of all the front of house operation. Um, but I'm actually also the wine director and the bar manager as well, which means so all the beverages, all the wine, the whiskeys and stuff. Wow. Um, and, and that explains your username. That's exactly it. Drinks and uh, a few people are asking me why drinks because I don't really post that much about drinks. But yeah. Yeah, that's, that's part of who I am and then what I enjoy doing as well yeah. as the time off. That's awesome. But you, you wind down by aquascaping, Correct. right? And how long have you been in the hobby? Uh, so I start with the, the pandemic, truthfully. It's one of those things that I'm, I was used to working, you know, those 90 hours a week, 60 hours a week, depending wow. where what job I had. Yeah. And hospitality can be quite draining, but it's uh, usually there's, you know, we're surrounded by humans and people continuously. Yeah. So I wanted a little bit of nature in my own place, um, because if we are to look at it in general, Toronto is mainly urban and it's mainly um, a city. So it's a concrete jungle. But I wanted a little something in my in my house that's yeah. a little bit more green. Because we're on the twelfth floor. Correct. Of a huge apartment block. Beautiful <laughs> view. I did a lovely time lapse this morning. Um, but this is your way to kind of unwind from work, reconnect with nature, disconnect from the stress, exactly. I guess. Exactly. And th this is beautiful. Is this your is this your contest tank? Yeah. So that was last year, the IPLC twenty twenty two. Unfortunately, a little bit of the like, for example, the background did collapse. So I moved from my old place to this one. And by doing so, I, I didn't even think I would be able to move um, this tank. But thankfully, a friend of mine, Frankie, was able to help me move it. Um, and I was able to continue it. Now it, it has changed radically from what it was, but now it's basically like a shrimp tank with one auto and three fish. Okay. <laughs> Do you have the contest uh, photo? Absolutely. That you can share? Of course. I'll, I'll overlay that now on the screen sure. so people can see the original. Yeah, well, my pleasure. Idea. 
it's um, you can see that the, the main reason or the idea inspiration for me on this one uh, so I call it the realm of giants and it was one of those things that when I did a road trip in California and I, I went to the Sequoia Forest and um, those gigantic thousand year old trees that are just so impressive I wanted to make sure that I could build this. Now this is a 60U, so it's a quite a small tank, but I love the fact that I was able to build something that looks much bigger, or at least has a lot of depth. Yeah, so this is similar to the ADA 60P, but it has more front to rear depth, is that right? That's it, so it has two inches extra, so that's one's from UNS, um, but it's pretty much the same as a 60P, just a little bit deeper. Yeah. And filtration, you've got the Neo Waze bio style hang on the back. Yeah, so I, I guess I'm a little bit of a... Um, over the top filter guys so I, I think it runs in uh, the canadians in us so i know if you know doe he has four, four gigantic so i actually have one biomaster underneath the 350 plus this hub okay nice. um, so for me it's one of those things that you know if you have to look by the way i must i must give credit where it's due this was made by frankie um this is, is he on instagram frankie? he is he is yeah so frankie fish 512 i want to say okay well, um, i'll leave a link to frankie <laughs> we love frankie yeah he's amazing and he built this beautiful stand but the biomaster is in the on the bottom yeah co2 tank as well and then i just kind of hide all my my nice. you know furts and whatnot awesome um very neat but yeah, that's, uh, that was my pride and joy. Uh, anybody who's been doing dioramas in small tanks, they know how hard they can be trying to maintain that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it was lots of fun, lots of fun building. But I think considering your a relatively short amount of time in the hobby, you've gone all in. You know, Absolutely. You don't do thing. You don't just sort of dip, dip your feet in. Or you no. Get your hole. You go plunge right in, don't you? That's you exactly it. Yeah, yeah. And that's just my nature in anything that I do. Whether it's uh, so, for example, my my newest job um, that I'm at, which forces me to know about whiskey. So originally, wine is my thing. I'm a trained sommelier. I'm a certified sommelier. Um, but I didn't know whiskey, and they wanted me to build a whiskey list. So now wow. we have over 300 <laughs> grain spirits. This uh, isn't so an alcohol like promotion video by the way no, no exactly that by no means by no means no, it's, it's, it's really more i get into you get yeah yeah in my hobbies fully. It, it's a good example of uh, yeah using that um you obviously have your personality type is you have like that ultra focus yes. on something that you when you're interested in something which Absolutely. i have as well and i think it explains why i made a go of it with aquascaping because mm -hmm. i was rubbish at everything else basically or, bit, or, or I was quite good at military stuff, but I didn't enjoy that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I was really grateful to find something as beautiful as aquascaping to get hyper-focused on. Absolutely. And then make a, yeah, we are where we are now, and where I'm talking about, yeah, this amazing hobby with you, and then how we can use the hobby to um, give us a sense of balance in life, I absolutely. think. Absolutely. You know, because absolutely. you have a high-pressure job. Mm -hmm. um, you're dealing with, lots of staff that's stressful right dealing with other humans yeah super stressful yeah it's it's dealing with humans that are on your team is one one thing but also the guests so where i work is a pretty high-end steakhouse well how many how many seats does it have how so including the private dining rooms we have 400 seats i think the, the lesson here is that no matter how stressed you are with work you can always come home exactly and then this is your piece exactly and, and uh, yeah, I think it's great. Do you find, though, because, you, dare I say, you're a bit obsessive with the hobby, mm -hmm. do you find, um, can you actually use the, the aquariums to consume and relax, or is the relaxation from always tinkering with them? Um, it's a bit of both, definitely okay. a bit of both. For example, this one, as we look at it, it is overgrown. Yeah. I've let the moth go slightly crazy. There's no more defined path and such. I've actually replaced the path with um, uh, gravels just so that I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and I can yeah. actually stay here and look at it. And I actually enjoy consuming it rather exactly. than for being ultra focused on that competition exactly. side of things. There's a, an element as well for me that I didn't realize, but my first tank last year that I built was a four foot uh, nature diorama, if you want, in terms, it was very high stems. Uh, I had lots of school of fish and I realized that I missed that. Yeah. I realized that diorama is beautiful in terms of, you know, I can look at it, but it doesn't have the same Therapeutical feeling that a nature aquarium gives me. Yeah. Um, so that's why we'll, you'll see. But there's a few of them that I'm trying to slow. Yeah. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at some yeah. other stuff. That's oh. just my. Um, this is for fun. I had a few extra plants. I wanted to build a terrarium. Yeah. Um, for those of you who've, who've seen my channel, I'm I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. I completely <laughs> embrace myself. And, yeah, uh, good, good. So I have a little. Uh, I am Groot in the back. Uh, Wabikusa. Oh, so there we go. I put a little Wabikusa on top of his head. 
and it's uh, just growing. But yeah, it's it's basically his little jungle. I'm letting it things go. Honestly, barely trimmed anything. Yeah. I just let it. Just let nature well. take its course. I love That's that. That's exactly it. Really nice. Now, yes. this here is the nature one that I'm building. I'm actually building it with uh, Ryan Seymour. Um, so it's kind of a partnership because I think that the biggest thing about our hobby is community. And that's one thing I really wanted to do with Ryan is build something, uh, which welcome to Canada, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so for us, it's, it, it was a matter of building something and that's where we're going back to the nature. Okay. Um, so anyway, that I have only showed the hardscape right now because that's what it is. We're going to plant it together. We're going to build it together. Awesome. So it's um, a proper collaboration. Correct. And is that Ryan Seymour, box gardener? That's it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've not exactly. met him yet. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Ah, oh, fantastic. Fantastic guy. Um, and, th and this layout, you're basically, do you mind me saying you're basically copying? Exactly. So, so you get, um, have you got the picture, the original? Uh, yeah, I, I can definitely send you the picture. Um, is yeah, it on your phone? It is on my phone. Let me, yeah. So from Masashi Ono, let me just try to find this picture for you. Right here, the um, aquarium that we are trying to replicate. Yes. In the sense, we wanted something that was stone focus, stems in the back, carpet. Um, now this tank is much bigger than my tank. My tank is actually a... Uh, 90 centimeter by 30 centimeter by 30 so it's it's a bookshelf if you wish yeah um, and we wanted to rebuild that so it's like the autumn colors and such and, and again for me when I first started the hobby because I didn't know the creativity I didn't know how one could build stones together to make a massive cliff mm. um, on Green Apple, actually, there was a, a video that Fukada made. So it's funny that now I'm inspiring myself from another Japanese master yeah. to build another one. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those uh, things that I'm I'm very happy with how it's growing already. Uh, you know, strong shadows, very nice highlight points as well that will be built with the plants and such. Um, yeah, that's that's been it. That's gonna be exciting to see that one grow. When are you gonna start? When are you gonna start it? Uh, it really depends on timing. Like I said, it's it's a collaboration, so I really want to build it with Ryan. Mm. Um, obviously, moving to another country can be a lot of things. So as soon as we have a little bit of free time together, we will be building so it. So Ryan's moved recently from Texas to from Texas. to Canada. Correct. Correct. Awesome. Exactly. And then I have um, I've always grown things. Yeah. I would say before aquascaping and such, I've I've had a few terrariums I built, um, which is literally just put plants in jars with a little bit of humidity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was it. Um, right. Awesome. Anyone can do this though, and it's it's almost maintenance free, isn't it? That's exactly you know, right. It's really inexpensive, and what a beautiful way just to bring a little slice of nature into your home. Yes, yeah, so like for example, this one here, it's doing so, so a little bit of brown plants, but that is an old whiskey bottle. Yeah. I, I just cleaned it up, removed yeah. the label, and put plants inside. That's awesome. Can we just swing that on. Oh, of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's got some nice layer in there. It's really cute. The, the funny thing is, so obviously, I, I being a nerd that I said I am, I have my Lego figurines there because... Uh, You're a Lego fan. You know, I, I enjoy it. So I have one scape underneath here, which is my uh, tiny, tiny library one and, and super low maintenance because I want it to have... Um, Sorry about the flashing, it's just the sinking of the shutter speed. Yeah. It's, it's not actually flashing in real life, <laughs> um, in case you're wondering. But yeah, that's cool. Is it just um, moss, moss That's balls, exactly it. it. Just moss balls, serious stone, white sand, and a beautiful X-Wing Lego. <laughs> Got to have a bit of fun, mate, in the hobby. Awesome. Absolutely. This is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, so that's my... Um, With the web ours. That's it. Terra base that I had. Everything on here was from Tropica. Um, you know, I've, I've actually just realized that I kind of ripped this top here, but it's it's been growing healthy. I spray it maybe once a week now, oh, wow. um, and the water just purely comes from um, the Terra base seeping water through through its its walls. Yeah, um, yeah, so that's what's going on today. One thing that I, I love about moss in general is to see the texture of immersed moth versus yeah. underground. Oh, the transition, transition, yeah. yeah. I absolutely love it because it's nice and beautiful little texture in there. Fascinating, isn't it? Was that the doorbell? No, that, that's the elevator. Oh, okay. You can yeah. hear it from here. That's cool. <laughs> uh, you've got some beautiful house plants. Yeah, so I think that it's one of those things with the hobby, whether it's water plants, immersed plants, terrestrial plants, um, there's pride and joy about knowing that you can keep something alive and yeah. you, can, you know, maintain it and, and just it, continue. And it rewards you. You, the amount of, the amount of care you put into it is proportional to the amount of joy I think you get back. Absolutely. Um, if it thrives, it thrives. If it doesn't, then you've learned something. That's exactly you know, right. You can just learn and improve each mm -hmm. time. This is lovely carnivorous plants. So this is my carnivorous plants exactly. So I have a Venus flytrap and um, 
butterworts in there. And it's funny because you can see that the two main one are here. It was originally just one piece. And it starts shooting off babies, which I have in the back more cent center. And it was literally just me taking it out, and re planting re it, oh, nice. and yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And then this is lovely. This reminds me of a shrimpery tank. You know shrimpery on Instagram? Yes, yes, exactly. So that's, um, for me, I just want to have a pond tank. Uh, so immersed growth in it and just, you know, having it, uh, in there and it's basically been growing nicely again those are all pots from tropica i decide to cut them up putting it in so i have a little bit of a hill in the back and yeah. then slowly it's lava stone that went all the way through um yeah. and then yeah beautiful okay this is the view from your apartment That's, yes so absolutely. you've got some lovely little plants out here i guess you'll bring them in soon won't you with a exactly it, yeah with, it gets a bit cooler exactly with the weather starting to change already um i'm gonna move everything in and it's one of those beautiful things from being in a, with so much light that I've, I've been able to grow a lot of plants and I have like my little pond in the corner and it's just trying to bring. Yeah, this pond, let's talk about this. Yeah, of course. Sit, sit there <laughs> and then get, there we go. Yeah, so this, uh, this pond here was just a little bit of a creation I wanted to do. Obviously there's a lot of trends that I, I've been seeing and that is one that I've been wanting to try myself. Now there is no fish, there's no livestock. It's just a bunch of plants and I wanted to see how would they grow? How would it, you know, just, progress so i have some pothos a little bit of monstera um again pots from tropica that i added to it and it's been it's been nice it's been really enjoyable just to to see how it's progressing how long has it been running uh, i want to say i started mid-june okay and you sort of tinker with it add things to it take stuff away yeah so i started for example to, i added those i want to say maybe a month ago maximum mm -hmm. um and everything else i've, I've had it beforehand uh, funny enough actually alex vela helped me out with those plants because oh, cool. she had one as well and she's like vince you should get one like, oh, all right well let's, let's do it beautiful mate really love it um yeah you don't need a garden do you when you've got all this greenery that you can nurture and cultivate yourself i'll give you it's it's a little bit more connecting because you're because it's all con in little containers you've got that element of control a bit more so you're kind of more maybe more inclined to nurture it rather Absolutely. than in a garden you tend to be a bit lazy and let it do its own thing exactly it's interesting isn't it interesting i never really thought about that before and it's so true because i i realized listening to the plants is that some need more water than others yeah and because they are secluded in their own thing i really listen to what this plant's like this one here yeah. i can water it every day and it's doing fine yeah but when i did that to the other one here i realized that it was not the case and that's the only way to really learn isn't it exactly rather than by reading books is actually yeah. doing it 